Mister Taylor Negara untuk ke panggung silakan. Apa kabar? Okay, so I have my slide here. Okay, so I, I will speak for about 15 minutes, and then we can do a Q and A. So you have questions, you can ask. Okay, so first about me and the MHF. I come from the Molecular Hydrogen Foundation. This is a science-based nonprofit that's focused on advancing the research, the awareness, and the education of hydrogen as a medical gas. You, you can just read this and translate this. So for example, with water, it's the H2O molecule, the hydrogens that are attached onto the oxygen, but that is a dust that is bound hydrogen. With this, just the two hydrogens that are bound together, and that's the hydrogen gas. I just want to clarify this has nothing to do with alkaline water, structured water, or many of these other water claims. So now with the research of molecular hydrogen, the hydrogen, molecular hydrogen has been shown to be therapeutic in about 170 different human and animal diseases and essentially every organ of the human body. Okay, so now the very first publication that got the hydrogen really started to grow was in 2007 in Nature Medicine. And it did so by acting as a therapeutic and selective antioxidant. The research on molecular hydrogen has been growing exponentially since 2007, being published in many other prestigious medical and scientific journals, and we can see the number of publications are increasing uh, rapidly. So the question many of you now have is, how is this possible? How does molecular hydrogen exert these beneficial biological effects to the organs? There are a number of explanations. The fact is we are still trying to understand the exact reasons why, but I will explain a couple for you. One of them is how molecular hydrogen can have an antioxidant effect. As this paper shows, uh, molecular hydrogen can scavenge the toxic hydroxyl radicals and convert them to water. The selectivity, selective is a very important word. And this is because free radicals, some of them are good for you, some of them are bad for you. Not all of them are bad. For example, nitric oxide, NO, this is a free radical. But this is the base, this is what causes vasodilation. This is for the immune system and many other benefits. Nitric oxide, uh, hydrogen peroxide is a reactive oxygen species, superoxide, anion radical, many of these are, are free radicals or oxidants, but they are good for you. But the hydroxyl radical, OH, shown there, that is just very bad. It's one of the most cytotoxic radicals there, there are. There's no benefit for it. And molecular hydrogen can scavenge selectively only that one. Hydrogen does not scavenge the beneficial radicals, only the bad radicals. <laughs> Another way that molecular hydrogen can help reduce oxidative stress is it can increase our body's own antioxidants. Okay? <coughs> so, the, we're, we are still investigating the exact mechanism of how molecular hydrogen is able to activate this NRF2 pathway. But we see in many studies that this pathway is what is being activated. Okay, uh, in this slide we see another benefit of molecular hydrogen. Molecular hydrogen can go everywhere in the cell very easily. We have the cell and we have other types of antioxidants. Uh, hydrophobic antioxidants and they have difficult time getting in. Then we have hydro hydrophilic antioxidants like vitamin C, they cannot go through the membrane very easy. So they want to stay outside. But the damage from hydroxyl radicals is occurring here in my mitochondria, in the nucleus, damaged DNA. Molecular hydrogen is the smallest molecule in the universe. So it can easily diffuse into the cell, into the mitochondria, into the nucleus. Very easy. It can react with the hydroxyl radical and convert it to water. 
We also have inflammation. Molecular hydrogen can decrease inflammation. The way that hydrogen can do this is by altering these molecules, interleukins, the MIP1s, many of the transcription factors, all of these cause inflammation, and hydrogen can decrease or, or alter the levels of these molecules, leading to decreased inflammation. This is accomplished via a, a cell modulating activity. <laughs> okay, we do see in many of the studies that hydrogen is effective at decreasing oxidative stress. For, for example, over here we have markers of oxidative stress. For example, MDA, MDA EBAR, EBAR, OHDG, OHDG. These are all markers of DNA damage. Administration of molecular hydrogen can lower these markers. So this is this is very good data because we're showing using many markers that hydrogen decreases oxidative stress. We're not looking at only one marker. We're looking at many, showing this is very effective. We, on this side, we see markers of antioxidant status like uh, superoxide dismutase, glutathione, catalase. These are our body's own antioxidants. And molecular hydrogen can increase our body's own antioxidants. Now, the hydrogen, as I said, is cell signaling. It can alter many of the uh, transcription factors, leading to many beneficial changes in the body. A little bit more detail. Um, of how hydrogen can regulate gene expression. This, this was shown from uh, Dr. Ota, also the, the researcher who published the article in Nature Medicine in 2007. Effectively, he found that hydrogen, because it can prevent radical damage in the cell membrane, it alters many changes that lead down to the gene expression. Um, Fatty acid metabolism, me metabolism, we want to increase metabolism. If we have oxidative stress, then we have less metabolism. So molecular hydrogen can decrease oxidative stress, and this prevents the production of 4-HNE, which is a protein adduct that chelates with the AKT protein phosphorylation and prevents the induction of FOX1 and the PGC1 alpha and the PPAR alpha, which induces the upregulation of FGF21 of the sacred fatty acid metabolism. Molecular hydrogen can alter the gene expression, and, and many of these uh, genes are changed, like fatty acid metabolism, steroid biosynthesis, peroxisomes, many beneficial changes. M many, many small changes leads to big change. Okay, here we have two mice. They, they grew up together. They were brothers. They ate together. They did everything together. But one of them drank hydrogen water, the other did not. We see hydrogen decreases body fat accumulation because we saw from the slides earlier, molecular hydrogen can increase the metabolism. There are different methods of administration of hydrogen. This is me in Shanghai, in inhalation of hydrogen gas at a medical clinic. This is me in Japan in a, in a high pressure hydrogen chamber. You can also take a bath with hydrogen-rich water. Very good for the skin. And molecular hydrogen is so small it can enter through the skin and into the bloodstream and give more benefits. But perhaps the most, the easiest way is drinking hydrogen-rich water. So to make hydrogen-rich water, we could take, for example, the gas from the inhalation machine, put the, take the hose and put it in the glass of water, and bubble for 20 minutes, and then we have hydrogen-rich water. That's one way. There's also simply electrolysis, where it decomposes the water to make hydrogen. But the drinking hydrogen-rich water is not only the easiest, but is also one of the most effective. Uh, one thing about inhalation of hydrogen, the Japanese government recently approved hydrogen inhalation as a medical procedure for cardiac arrest patients. So it is gaining a lot of acceptance and medical applications, many medical applications. When we look at the many diseases, 
Hydrogen has been shown to help with the top eight. Cardiovascular disease, cerebrovascular disease, diabetes. The most important part, one of the most important parts is the safety profile. Molecular hydrogen at the very high is very safe. There are hundreds of studies where we see no toxic effects of hydrogen. We also have used hydrogen since the 1940s to prevent decompression sickness in deep sea diving. And this is at very, very high concentrations, millions of times higher concentrations than what we need for therapeutic use. We even see it's very natural to our bodies, our intestinal bacteria. When we eat fibers, the bacteria metabolize the fiber to hydrogen gas. So we always, we are always exposed to hydrogen. We always have small amounts of hydrogen in our blood, in our breath, all the time. It's very safe, very natural. So we have a prediction. Normally, the market is 10 years behind the science. 2007 was when the Nature Medicine publication appeared. So now we are 2017. I have been saying this for five years, that 2017 will start the year where people begin to be aware of hydrogen. We'll start to grow exponentially. Now we are this year. I can make another prediction. In 10 years, 2027, everybody will do hydrogen. You can write down these references. Terima kasih.